Hello everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at the ESP32 camera module using the Arduino IDE. One of the recent releases of the ESP32 Arduino library added support for the camera so we're going to take a look at installing that. The camera module I have is the ESP32 Cam. It costs less than $10 from AliExpress. This was the first camera module i seen on AliExpress. I've since seen other people with other ones, including an official Espressive one. This one doesn't seem the easiest to use because it doesn't have a USB for powering or programming, so you need to program it using the TX and RX pins. And there's a couple of other issues with it too. So one thing about the form factor of this board is I don't really like it at all. It's actually kind of bad. So it fits into a breadboard, but there's quite a big amount of PCB after the pin. So it actually just about you can get jumpers into the next pins, but the PCB kind of rubs off them. So it's a little bit awkward, but that's not its biggest problem. Its biggest problem is the fact that the reset pin is on the bottom of the board. So if you want your camera facing out or up, your reset pin is below it. So you can't push it into a breadboard. To get around that, I'm using the dual jumper pins that come with a Wemos D1 Mini. So it's the female ones that have the longer legs. And uh, yeah, so that gives me access to the reset button because the reset pin isn't even broken out. So I can't reset it any other way, I have to press the button. Um, it's also quite awkward to power. Um, it does seem to require quite a lot of current. I have just a micro USB breakout connection. I was getting some brownout detections, you even see it in the... you just see it in the serial console uh, that it's browning out. So putting... Uh, this is a 220 microfarad capacitor in there seems to have helped that a bit, but yeah, it's a very awkward layout. To use this module, you'll need the Arduino IDE that has ESP32 uh, boards installed through the board manager, or you can get it through GitHub either, but you will need to use the one that was released in January of 2019. So it is version 1.1. So if you if you have an older version than that, you'll need to update it. For a programmer, I'm actually using a Node MCU ESP8266 board. This is pretty similar to my video about programming an ESP12 module using one, and I'll link to that up here. The only thing is I'm not using any of the automatic reset or automatic lowering of GPIO pin zero because the camera board doesn't have the reset pin broken out, so you still need to manually reset it yourself. So any USB to serial converter would do for this, just once it's a 3.3 volt logic level. To wire it up to the programmer, we are going to take TX of our Node MCU and connect it to U0T. And we're going to take RX and connect it to U0R. So this will be different if you're using an actual USB to serial programmer. You'll need to uh, swap them over. So connect RX to TX and TX to RX. The reason I don't have to do that here is because it's already done. We're using the USB to serial chip that's on this. But the pins that are being exposed, the TX and RX aren't the USB to serial converters chips, they're the ESP8266 ones, so they're already swapped there. So to keep it right, you just need to connect the same ones to each other. You also need to connect a common ground, which I've done wrong here because blue is my ground. And that's all you need to connect between the two of them. But you also need to make sure that on reset, you're grounding the zero pin of the ESP32. So to do that, I'm just using a jumper pin. Um, because the reset pin is not exposed, I can't use the D3 pin of this because it only stays low for 
when the reset is happening but I can't trigger the reset of this at the same time as this so you just need to manually hold it low so now you want to provide power to the ESP32 and you want to plug in your node MCU board inside the Arduino IDE you want to go to file examples you want to go to ESP32 and camera and then camera web server when you open this there's only a couple of things that you need to change so for me the camera model I'm using is this AI Tinker it's written on the ESP32 chip uh, below that so you can just comment out the rover hash define and uncomment the AI Tinker one and then the last thing you need to do is just put in your SSID and password next we'll have to set the board settings in the tools drop down so you go to tools ESP32 rover module uh, will work fine um, it needs to be one that has uh, PS RAM enabled anyways so if you can use the dev mode one or dev module but it will have another option for enabling the PS RAM which you need to do but the rover module works fine partition scheme it will start at default but you need to set it to this huge app one because the app space is too limited on the default one for this sketch and that's pretty much it for port you just need to set it to the port number of your programmer for me it's com4 that's the port number of my node mcu board and that's pretty much it so to program you just click the upload button Hopefully you don't get a Java error, so we'll just click the upload button again. Because I already had this jumper pin connected when I powered up the ESP32 module, I didn't need to do anything there. It was already in uh, flash mode. So if you had already powered up your module, you'll need to reset it first. So that is programmed now, so you need to take out your jumper and you'll need to hit the reset button to bring it back into standard mode and if you take a look at your serial monitor you should see this message here that the camera is ready and you need to open up this IP address to connect to it so let's take a look at the camera in action so this is the default web interface you see when you go to the page I have this uh, active as well just so you can see the difference between just the standard webcam and how brightly lit the room is and things like that so the first thing we'll look at is uh, get still so this will take a picture you'll notice that it is upside down what it actually is is it's on its side and I keep forgetting which side it is so for me the orientation is correct when the cam or the M of the cam is at the bottom so that the uh, flash LED is also at the bottom not sure why that is and I don't see a way of changing that in software but as you can see there but you might also notice that like lighting wise it's not the best this is a very brightly lit room at the moment I have two spotlights shining down towards me here as well there's a good bit of light coming in through that window it's not bad it's definitely much better this morning than it was last night so that uh, is something interesting Um, you can change the resolution as well I'm sure this is going to be pretty bad but we'll see so yeah it's I guess it's not terrible I'm not sure what's causing all those lines uh, on it there's different options that you can change and play around it. That lens correction one seems to definitely make an impact but it has made it darker. Um, but yeah, definitely play around with all these different ones and see how it goes. You can also do a start stream. It's not going to work well on this high resolution. It works okay down to VGA I think. So there it is. You can see the difference between there's a little bit of a delay but it's not awful. Um, I'm trying to get my hand in both here. Um, yeah, it's not awful. Like it's passable. Um, 
you cannot do face detection with this um, with that resolution though so please it's kind of hidden behind uh, behind my face here but um, yeah please add or please select CIF or lower resolution before enabling this feature so I'll just click OK on that and we'll go down to CIF and we can do face detection and start stream so let's see can we get it it's as you can see here it's really slow it's not this slow when you don't have face detection enabled we saw a face detection once there it's hard for me to see is it detecting my face while looking into the camera it doesn't seem to be doing a great job of it um but like here's doing the stream without face detection and you can see it works uh, much better um yeah so that's pretty much as far as i've played around with it it seems interesting enough but definitely not the highest quality. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. As always, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. And as a thank you for staying to watch the end of the video, there should be a discount code for my Tindy store there. So again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.